Hi everybody, I'm Susanna from Slovak Compass Mission. I have been working as a financial advisor for more than 10 years and investments are my everyday topic. But no one has ever asked me how can I make my investment fruitful? If I have decided to be the disciple of Jesus and to live in every part of my life with Christ, I cannot separate my professional life and my spiritual life. It's not only about my heart, my values, my family, but it's also about my job, my company, my industry, my city and country, and discipleship happens through relationships. So the first important step is to know what is our role. And the Bible says it clearly. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So if we proclaim that God is the owner of everything, this should be also the starting point also for our investment. And the second step how to make our investment fruitful is the multiplication. Would you plant a seed that brings only one piece of fruit and the next year known you have to plant it again to bring another piece? Or would you plant a seed that brings five or ten pieces or that becomes a tree and in a couple of years it brings you hundreds of apples or oranges. And that is what comes from the parable of talents. Why was the master pleased with those first two servants? Because they multiplicated the talents. God gave each one of us some resources, some talents. And do not, do not look like your investment is now. If it's, a, if it's a only a grain or a seed, but understand what it can become. Have a vision for your investment. So if we manage the resources well, or if we are making something more of what he entrusts to us, then he will entrust us with more. And then one day, when we will stand in front of him face to face, we will hopefully hear that, well done, my good and faithful servant, come into my glory. So where to invest my money? We could talk about many different types and directions of the investment and I decided for the perspective of time. Maybe you have already heard that we should have uh, three piles of our money and investments on short-term, mid-term and long-term investments and I will change it a little. The first one is the investment that brings you profit right now. It's uh, your salary or the income from your company and it uh, should be an investment that is very safe and with low risk. The second one is the investment to the future and uh, the return of this investment is expected in a couple of years. This can be some startup project or uh, investment to some uh, funds and it can also be the investment to your kids and the time that the mother spends with the kids on her maternity leave. A lot of uh, women feel somehow less valuable when they are at home with the kids and bring no money to the family but this can be the most fruitful time of your life. And then later it can be the investment to the education of the kids or to your own education. And the third one is the investment to the God's kingdom and the eternity. The best example is to imagine our life as a line. Our life on uh, the earth is a dot. It begins and it ends. But life in heaven is an unending line extending from that dot. So if we are wise, we are not living for the dot but for the line. And when we do this, then we can be able to store up for ourselves the treasures in heaven. How to invest God's way? The scripture gives us a lot of principles that can guide us uh, in how to invest. Some of them might be really familiar to you. So the first is that we need to balance our investments and saving with generosity. Wanting to get rich is uh, incredibly dangerous and generosity is the best way how to overcome 
the love of money and dreaming of becoming rich. And the second is to avoid risky investment. We can do this by praying and seeking wise counsel and be especially careful of receiving investment advice from people who do not have a biblical view of money. The third one, very popular, is to diversify. The perfect investment doesn't exist. We need to diversify and not put all our eggs in one basket. Each investment had, has its own advantages and disadvantages. And the Bible says clearly in Ecclesiastes 11, divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. That's very good advice. Money can be lost on any investment. Stocks, bonds, real estate, gold, whatever, can perform very well or very poor. The fourth principle is count the costs. Every investment has costs. Financial, time, effort, your, your emotional stress. Before you decide of any investment, consider all the costs it has and if you can really afford it. For example, rental house, very popular. That will require time and effort to rent and maintain. And it may happen that you will not find anyone to rent it for some time. And you will have to pay all the costs. Will you be okay? The fifth principle is the Lord's timing. The timing of the investment is very important in this economic climate. Ecclesiastes 3 tells us again, there is an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every event under heaven. God wants to be involved in every area of your investment financing. So humbly ask him for wisdom as you consider an investment. The sixth is to think long term and be a steady plodder. The Bible is very clear again about that our goal should be to build wealth slowly. So a biblical approach to investing is going to take a long term view and is going to let time work for us. And the last principle is to trust in God. Good times, bad times, whatever times, our trust is in the Lord. Commit your plans to the Lord. He defines the result and gives success. God is always with us.